Welcome back to Trippin' Over 60. This time, Jim's going to show you how to lay a hardwood floor with zero waste. We're excited to show you the very first room that we completed. It was our master bedroom. And we're taking a day trip to Dresden. Actually, it's two trips in one. We went once at Easter time, and just recently we went with our youngest daughter and her husband. But first we're going to show you the steps it took to get our permanent residence here in Germany. Won't you come with us? Say, do you like my new straw hat? I bought it just for summer travel. Looks good. Although I was fond of that Amish hat. It, it was nice, but uh, it kind of scared people, I think. Welcome to Tripping Over 60. We're Jim and Linda Ryan, a couple of baby boomers who've caught the travel bug. Come with us on our adventure as we move to Vilka Haslau, Germany to begin a new life and a new dream. Hello, Linda and Jim. Let's go to Klauchau. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Jim. Hello, Linda. This is Andrea, our good friend and Lutz's assistant at Remax. Hello. This is Andrea. Ul Ul Olman. Tell me your last name. Ulman. Olman. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And we are on our way to Glauchau. 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 To uh, to get our our, our long-term residency permit. Tell us a little about this whole process, how, how Germany thinks about residency. Uh, in German, child, do it in German or in English? English, please. English, please, about resident. Uh, because uh, the guy who's there, who's, who we meet, uh, said we have to come after three weeks again. And then he give you, uh, what is it, permit? Permit, yes. For another year, and then you have to do it Every year, uh, after five years, it is done. You can stay in Germany for the rest of your life. Great. So off we went to Glauchau, where we applied to become permanent residents of Germany. Rittergut is a big undertaking, so we knew right away that we would need a sanctuary for ourselves. The first room we tackled was our bedroom. Still working on the bedroom floor, I will show you the most common mistake that most people make and end up with a lot of waste. Remember, I cannot afford to waste anything. Uh, most people would take your next piece of wood, lay it down, mark it, cut this piece off and throw it away. We don't do that. Roy showed us, Roy is my friend from Tennessee, how to lay a floor and have zero waste. You take a long piece like this, you turn it in for end, you put it down, you mark where you want it, and then you take it to the saw. We're here at the saw. I use a miter saw. It's real fast and accurate. You can use any sharp saw that cuts the wood nice and clean. Okay, we've cut the piece. We're back at the job site. We take our hammer. It's a special hammer with an angle for tapping the wood into position. You get the grooves tight. We do that. You have a flooring bar and you put here at your wall to tap it back in because you cannot get a hammer back there to do that. We use two inch crown staples and I'm going to put four of them in this short piece to really anchor it in. And this end of the hammer is what's used for driving the plunger. You do not want to use the back end, it will damage the equipment. And that piece is in. Now, 
you're asking probably what did I do with the long piece that I cut off. This is it. It doesn't matter that there's no tongue or groove on this end because it now goes to the other side of the room. This is the starter piece for the next row. You leave about a quarter, three-eighths of an inch gap for expansion. That's going to be covered by the baseboard, and that's how you do a floor with zero waste. Thank you, Roy, for teaching me how to do it. Now that we're at the back of the room and we're coming up close to the finish, we no longer have the ability to swing a hammer, so we can't use the big power nailer. So what we're doing now is using the brad nailer and using two-inch brads. And we nail those through the tongue, and we just keep tapping them in with the hammer like, like always. Because the longer the board, the greater the chance of a warp in it, we're going back to putting in smaller pieces and getting a straight line the same way as we did when we started the first two rows. Well, we're down to the last row, and uh, it gets a little tight here, but it's not a problem. You put your board down, you take your uh, flooring tool, to revisit the whole window operation we've set up out here in the courtyard. We've been taking windows down, repairing them, scraping them, getting them ready for painting, and now we've begun to paint. Just to give you an idea of the scope of this project, this collection right up here simply represents the windows in our bedroom for a total of, wait for it, 14 windows, each coming out, each being scraped, repainted, cleaned, and put back. We're going to be doing this for quite a while. To break up the monotony of window cleaning, we kept ourselves busy with repairing walls, 
hanging a chandelier, painting, painting, oh, and more painting, and installing a new wardrobe. All in all, we're pretty pleased with our new sanctuary. Dresden is the capital of the state of Saxony in East Germany, near the borders of Poland and the Czech Republic. It is the fourth largest city in Germany and has a population of over 530,000. Dresden is known for its art, culture, and architecture, particularly its phoenix-like rise from the rubble of the February 1945 Allied firebombing in which over 90% of the city was destroyed. Today it's a vibrant and beautiful city attracting visitors from around the world, including two recent expats. Any day trip starts with a train from our village into Zwickau. Here we are at the train station in Zwickau. We decided this morning to go into Dresden, so we're waiting for the Dresden train right now. And it's Easter Sunday. And it's Easter Sunday, yes. So. Hello train. No train yet. Well, here we are, hour and 20 minutes later, we're in Dresden. typical older Hauptbahnhof, a main train station. All the trains pull in here one direction and then in order to leave everybody heads out this way. So we'll be here for the afternoon. It's Easter. We needed something fun to do. Now we're inside the train station at Dresden. This is Lint's Easter Bunny. They sell these enormous gold foil Easter Bunnies with little red ribbons around their necks. There's the little ad. And then the big one that they're advertising here at the Dresden. Hop on Hop. It's Easter Sunday, so we're not expecting to find a lot of things open. Usually on Sundays, the only thing you'll see open it's going to be the, the sandwich shops and bake shops here at the train station. Visiting the city center is an easy 20 minute walk from the train station. Or a five minute tram ride. Coming into the old town center at Dresden, ahead of us is the palace and beyond it is the Catholic Church here. The spires here are particularly beautiful. These are lights that I have liked for years and years. And they're all around here. They're, they're just beautiful. If Rittergut was just a bit larger, I could see a pair of these out in front. This is part of the museum complex here called Swinger. 
Inside is a beautiful garden area. That little bit of spire you can see up there is the center of a huge display that's inside. We're continuing down the street this way. Beyond this building is the Opera House and that's our next stop. This is the Opera House. When they have large balls inside, they'll also pipe the music outside and people that were not invited will all be waltzing, Vienna waltzes outside in their coats and mufflers. This was how the uh, royals went from the palace over to church. Never had to worry about rain. I believe they're in the process of uh, cleaning the stone up. Here we are still on the riverside. Ahead of us is an enormous mosaic that continues farther down this street. It depicts the various princes from the Dresden area. Can't miss an opportunity to show you a little horse-drawn something. In addition to horse-drawn tours, Dresden City Center is teeming with artists, including Soviet-era musicians and restaurants. A trip to Dresden wouldn't be complete without a relaxing lunch on the square. People watching and enjoying bubbling water and tasty German food. <sighs> At the end of a long day, it is so nice to be able to come into our room and relax and be away from all of the dust and the clutter and remind ourselves what a really good idea this all was. We still have a lot of work to do, but we've also allowed enough time for travel and exploring. So for now, I'm Linda. And I'm Jim. We're tripping over 60. Should we? Oh, yes, please.